Dining Table Makeover with Paint with Rebecca Willis from The Woodland Studio. For this tutorial, you'll need cleaning solutions such as TSP, shop towels, rags, and microfiber cloths, vacuum or shop vac, 100, 120, 150, and 220 grit sanding pads, brown paper bag, a tack cloth. The paint that I'm using is Algonquin from Fusion Mineral Paint. I'm using Top Coat Ferrothane Diamond Matte and Finish and Soft Squishy Pads, 150 and 220 grit. You can get them from either Surf Prep, because I'm using them with my Surf Prep Sander, or you can actually get Squishy Pads off of Amazon and use them on maybe your Detail Sander. Link below. Step 1. Inspect. I got this dining table off of Facebook Marketplace for $30. It does not have the middle leaf, but that works for me. There are many scratches and dents, and chip veneer. I hope to smooth these out either by just sanding or by using paint to camouflage these areas to turn this into something beautiful. Step 2. Clean. Using my shop vac, I'm vacuuming all the dust, any cobwebs, anything else that's lingering on here, and using TSP cleaner in a ratio of 1 to 1 with water. I'm also using this handy drill attachment to scrub deep and wipe clean. I remove all the dirt and grime until I'm satisfied with the cleanup and then I rinse it with water to remove all of the leftover soap residue. Step 3 Sanding When I was inspecting this piece, I saw that there were chips in the veneer and I did not want to over sand either. I started with 100 grit sandpaper to remove the old finish and I did not require to use any chemical stripper because the finish was coming off quite easily with the sander. Remember to not use too much pressure and let the sander work for you. I do regret moving the sander back and forth so much as you can see here, only because this can cause swirly marks. The next step here is that I'm using hot water and microfiber rags in order to remove any dust or dirt that came up from the sanding process. So this is really important. I'm also cleaning the legs while the tabletop dries and then after the legs are all dried, I will start removing the finish. I did not film it but I started with my orbital sander at 120 grit and moved all the way up to 220 grit using my surf prep sander. This way I can smooth down any raised grain and it can be ready for the paint wash. I once again regret I did not film this part but I had used my orbital sander. Um, at 120 grit to remove the edging off of the apron and the edging of the dining table. And now I'm using my surf prep sander in order to smooth down any raised grain at 150 grit moving up to 220 grit sandpaper. What's great about the surf prep is that it can conform around these edges without actually cutting into the table. You can use surf prep pads or I've seen other people using the squishy pads off of Amazon and attaching it to their orbital sanders or attaching it to their detail sanders so it's not moving around so much. Either way, they are awesome. When it came to finishing off the tabletop, I'm using my orbital sander. This is 150 grit and I'm moving in the direction of the grain in order to smooth down the raised grain from washing it. Then I go with 180 grit and finally 220 grit. Then I clean off the dust with a tack cloth. Step 4. Applying Paint Wash Using the color Algonquin um, from Fusion Mineral Paint, I'm applying a paint wash to the dining table. There are many methods to apply a paint wash. One method is to take a paint and the water in a separate bucket or bowl and mix, then wash it on. Another method is to take spray bottles of water, spritz the surface, then apply the paint. In my case, I wet a shop towel, rubbed the surface wet, and then I applied the paint directly to the surface. Looking back, I probably should have taken the paint into a separate container instead of dipping right into the container of paint. When applying the paint wash, try to get it into the grain, and also if any paint starts to dry quickly, just wet it and spread the paint. It looks messy, but trust the process, it will turn out great. Now that the one section is done, I move on to the sex second section, and then I repeat the process one at a time until the whole tabletop is complete.
When it came to painting the apron and the edging, I decided to actually use more paint to the edge here, as you can see, just to cover up the old underlying wood that was underneath the old finish. The wood was kind of green and yellow and brown, and I just really wanted to cover that up, so a wash wouldn't work there. Once that was done, the apron and the legs, though, were going to be washed with paint. So I applied the water base first and got that all over the apron and then I applied the paint. Admittedly, I did use a little bit more paint than I needed, but not to worry. I wet the surface again with the shop towel, which was also soaked in a little bit of water. And then I smeared the paint from the apron over to the legs. And I kept doing that process over and over, which then I didn't actually have to dip back into the paint bucket. I just needed to use the paint that I overloaded onto the apron. And as you can see here, I'm applying more and more. It doesn't look like it's going to be adhering. It kind of looks like it's raising off the edging, but it's working. You just trust the process and keep rubbing it into the wood grain over and over. And trust me, once it's dry, it's going to look really nice. Step five, preparing your top coat. I'm using the Verithane Diamond Finish, but before I do that, I am assembling my components of the sprayer. That's to make sure you have the nozzle seal, which is the little red circular piece, the nozzle cap, the nozzle, the connecting that, and making sure everything is secure. Also, make sure that your suction tube is facing the correct way. In this position, I can spray downwards. If I needed to spray upside down, then I would point the nozzle in the opposite direction. The next step is to stir your top coat. I'm using, again, the Verthane Diamond Finish in the uh, version matte and I am stirring the top coat first. Once I'm done stirring the top coat, then I pour the top coat into the strainer. As you can see here, there was a lot of debris that got caught in the strainer and I'm saving that strainer because it's a really good quality strainer and I'm going to wash it and dry it for a second use. And here we go, we're all ready to spray. Step 6, preparing your PPE, also known as personal protective equipment. I'm using this mask for my face and my face shape, but especially because of my nose, it's a little big, I need to use the large mask. I'm attaching the filters, and these are to prevent organic vapors from entering your lungs. And when not in use, I store the filters and the mask in Ziploc bags. Once all the components are attached, I am affixing it to my head, to the top of my crown, and at the base of my neck. It's important to have a good snug fit and to do the testing of the mask as I am doing here. I noticed that it wasn't actually fitted properly after testing it, so I am fixing it and reshaping it to my face and pulling the uh, threads in order to make it fit tighter, and then I am ready to spray my top coat. Step seven, applying your top coat. When applying the top coat, make sure to pass the top coat in even passes and overlap the last pass by half in order to make sure you get a good even coverage over the uh, table. Also move in the opposite direction in order to get full coverage and have a light light shimmering over the table so you can kind of see where you're working. Also, you gotta get a little creative, and I had to kinda crawl underneath the table in order to spray the top coat on the inside of the legs, and once that was completed, then I moved to the outside of the legs. After that, I started spraying the apron, and I spray horizontally, and once that was done, then I spray vertically in order to get again, the full coverage over the entire um, apron and edging of the dining table.
Step seven, lightly sand between coats of top coat. If you really want that smooth buttery finish, you need to sand between layers of top coat. I am using that large brown paper bag and I am sanding the apron, the legs, moving the sanding paper all over and after that's complete then I take a wet shop towel to remove the dust that I had picked up from the sanding. Then I repeat the process with the top coat for three more layers. And here we have it, the final reveal. Do you remember how crusty, outdated, and damaged this piece appeared to be? And now it's giving off urban barn vibes with this beautiful aesthetic, this beautiful beige aesthetic. And the paint wash didn't cover the veneer grain, it actually highlighted it and it really brought it out into a more modern aesthetic. I'm just so happy that I finally have a real dining table after five years of using uh, something else. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial on how you can use paint to update an old dining table. And you have had this wonderful tutorial with Rebecca Willis from the Woodland Studio. And remember, you can do it too.